Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is Stephen Ehrlich, Director of Research for Digital Assets. Stephen, thanks for popping on. Great. Thanks, Brittany. Pleasure to be here. In your latest crypto newsletter, you offered an outlook on the crypto market. We're two months in now to 2023. Can you give us a sense of how the crypto market's looking? Yeah, so so far it's it's looking pretty good. Uh, the crypto market has gotten off to a roaring start in 2023. I mean, Bitcoin, Ether both jumped up around 35, 40% in January. Many major altcoins saw similar gains. Uh, some outperformed considerably, uh, especially ones that are focused on scaling Ethereum or um, this this new fad in crypto called liquid staking, which we can get into uh, in a little bit if you'd like. But now, one of the things that I really tried to call out in my newsletter is the idea that this is a time where people need to be careful. Uh, a real warning sign that I saw is that despite Bitcoin and Ether's surges in January, they were mostly flat on they were mostly flat in February. And to me, that means that most investors, especially the professional ones, the quote unquote smart money, are really trying to figure out where the market's going to go next. I mean, ju just remember, uh, we're still in uh, record high inflation. We're still dealing with record high inflation. Uh, the economy, while when it's roaring, it's usually a good thing. Um, the stubbornness of <clears throat> excuse me, the stubbornness of employment is actually raising fears that the Fed is going to have to keep raising rates. Uh, uh, a few weeks ago, it was almost unanimous. There was almost a unanimous belief that the Fed was only going to raise rates by 25 basis points at its next meeting in March. Now fears are starting to creep up that it's going to go up to 50 basis points and that there could be a subsequent raise uh, after that, which would not only delay a period of time where the, red, where the Fed will hold rates steady, but we might not see our first declines until 2024. And so we're in this tenuous environment, but, but at the same time, there are some tokens that are surging to exorbitant levels without any real reason why. And, and I'd like to talk about, about a few of them. Um, for instance, uh, there is a whole suite of artificial intelligence related tokens that are doing nothing more than piggybacking off of uh, all the hype, for lack of a better word, the chat GPT, that, that chat bot um, that Microsoft invested $10 billion in uh, has all that hype that it has accumulated. Um, to be very clear, um, Chat GPT has no token, and and also most of these artificial intelligence related tokens uh, don't have much use right now anyway. And and there are some very real reasons why artificial intelligence and blockchain may not necessarily go together as well as some as well as some people are hoping. So anyone looking to buy any type of crypto token to get exposure to artificial intelligence, uh, I would certainly be very very wary of because. Uh, if there is going to be any type of payoff, it's likely not going to be years until it's not likely not going to be years until then. And in the meantime, you're buying at a peak hype, hype cycle where more likely than not, you're going to be a sucker or somebody that bought the token earlier or held it on and is selling to you at a, at a nice profit. You're going to be the one left holding the bag. So so be very careful about that. And um, on, on top of that, there uh, a security firm called Peck Shield actually noticed that there are more than 100 tokens out there with the name chat gpt somehow in it and and again peak hype cycle there's going to be charlatans there's going to be fraudsters and and the chat gpt has no token has no affiliation with blockchain at all at least for now so anyone buying those tokens is, is clearly just buying vaporware um you're, you're buying something that's fraudulent and you're likely going to lose all your money so that's just um that's just one example of kind of the, the frothiness in this, in this market that people need to be careful of steven you said there is no token for chat gbt yet it's in hundreds of tokens names can you talk about the legality of this it sounds like fraud yeah i mean it could it could be fraud um um, if nothing else, it, it is definitely wrong. Um, the, the, pro the, the beauty, but I guess the problem with open source technology like, like crypto and, and, and blockchain is, is that anybody can create a token with any name. I could create a Steve coin tomorrow. You could create a, a Britney coin. We could create a token saying Eagles Super Bowl 58 champion token uh, the next day, which would, which I know we're all hoping for. And there's there's nothing there's nothing necessarily illegal about it. I mean, once you start infringing upon someone's um, some someone's trademark, someone's copyright, um, certainly then that could lead to uh, legal 
issues. But at the same point, many of the people that are issuing these these fraudulent tokens, uh, they're pseudonymous, they're anonymous names on, on the internet. Um, it's hard to figure out exactly who they are. Most of them will probably abscond with the funds before anyone's able to really track them down. And to be perfectly honest, in most cases, the, the, the money involved is not big enough for a company like ChatGPT or Microsoft to, to really to really care about. So um, it's definitely wrong. It likely is some sort of, uh, of uh, I guess, like IP property rights infringement. But at the end of the day, there's not going to be much recourse for individual investors that get burned on something like this. Stephen, it sounds like it's pretty easy to get duped. And you issued some pretty blunt advice in your newsletter that I would want you to dive into. And that advice was, don't be a sucker. Why is it such an easy time for people to be a sucker right now? And I guess later in the conversation, we can discuss how they can protect themselves. Yeah, it's just it's it's easy because, I mean, there's a lot of different it's kind of a perfect storm right now for people to get caught up again in the FOMO, the, the fear of missing out. Uh, we're, we're all licking our wounds from 2020 uh, unless you had your entire portfolio in cash. And it, it's it's exciting to see the markets jump in January. Uh, it's enticing to want to try to regain everything that you lost quickly. But at the same time, that's not necessarily how things work. And slow and steady is what wins the race. And you really just need to, these are times where you need to be cold and calculating when it comes to, when it comes to investing. Steven, so what red flags can people look for to protect themselves? Right. So, so there are a few easy things that you can do to make sure that you're not um, you're not being fooled, um, that you're not buying a token to a project that doesn't exist, or you're not buying um, a knockoff token for a project that does exist. So, a, a couple things that you can do. Um, for one, if you hear about some new token, Nike coin, and that's just a for instance, or Tesla coin, or uh, or, or something like that, you can go directly to this company's websites look at the social media the verified social media for the founders uh check reputable news sources like forbes to see if we're covering it um, for instance if tesla ever launches a digital token we will 100 percent cover it uh, if, if you're not seeing some of those things there's a good chance that the token is is fraudulent or or knockoff so that's one thing that you can do two if you do find out about a new project, a, a big company, some sort of new token out there, and you want to get involved, make sure that you buy the right one. Uh, if there is ever going to be a Tesla token, likely it's going to be issued on one of the more mainstream blockchains like Ethereum. So if you start seeing Tesla token on a very random blockchain that has just a few users, uh, it's probably not the exact one. Or if you do see something that looks like a Tesla token, on Ethereum, but the name is slightly wrong, the name is slightly different. Uh, again, make sure that you're buying the the right one. And that can be a little bit more sophisticated, that can be a little bit more challenging to do, but at the same point on that company website, um, there's usually um, there's usually documentation that you can look for, there's usually um, some sort of, of address that you can, uh, that's not, there's usually some documentation that, that you can look for if you want to buy a particular token directly from an issuer, um, make sure that you're, you're going to a legitimate website that has appropriate website security. And then if, if, if nothing else from that, uh, buy those tokens on centralized exchanges like, like Coinbase, Kraken, Gemini, ones that are legitimate, regulated, and I know go through strong due diligence processes to make sure that they list, they list authentic tokens. Um, sometimes people look to get ahead of the curve by buying tokens on decentralized exchanges. Um, there, there's, there's many out there. The biggest one is, is Uniswap, but I'm not calling them out in, in any particular way. And, and those, there is really no listing criteria. People can put up anything that they want. And that's often where people can get into trouble if they're trying to buy a token that looks or sounds like a legitimate one, but may actually be a knockoff. So that's so that's another thing that you can do. And, and then third, and, and this is more geared towards tokens that have been around for a little while, but are pumping or surging for a particular reason. Make sure that there's a real legitimate uh, explanation for what you're saying in, the, in these tokens. And, and this kind of goes back to some of those uh, AI uh, focused tokens out there that, that are surging. Uh, see if there, there's a legitimate reason, like, like a major new partnership or a dramatically forward in in the technology and and that 
it, it's not just um, market excitement that's driving a token forward. Because again, uh, it's very hard to try to time the market. I know some people may say, well, I have this token. I bought it here. I'm going to sell it here to some to someone else. Um, that's very difficult to do. And I always recommend that when uh, people invest in crypto, they think about it from a five to seven year time horizon and the fluctuations of the market are going to get smoothed out over that period of time. So um, really try not to get too distracted um, by market movements that cannot necessarily be easily explained. I like your advice here. Do your due diligence. If something's too good to be true, it probably is. But something that you said earlier in our conversation really stuck out to me, and that was we're still licking our wounds from 2020. In January, we saw a bear market rally, and you're sounding decently optimistic about crypto in 2023. Why is there so much volatility specifically when it comes to crypto? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, I am optimistic overall for crypto in, in 2023. Uh, I, I do hope and expect that we'll get some more regulatory clarity. And in the crypto market, um, although 2022 was a bear market for everybody, the crypto market was disproportionately uh, impacted uh, because of because of the, the bankruptcies that have been chronicled throughout the year that, that we've spoken about before. And, and all of that, again, was... Um, was uh, uh, what's the word? And punctuated by by the FTX bankruptcy in in November. Now, crypto is always going to be more volatile than um, traditional asset classes for a couple of reasons. I mean, uh, it, it tends to have it has a much smaller um, market size, total market cap than traditional asset classes. I mean, for instance, the, the total crypto market cap has just now regain the $1 trillion mark again. I mean, we have individual companies that are worth more than all of crypto together. And, and on top of that, and especially once we start moving beyond like the big large cap cryptos, the, the Bitcoins, the Ethereums, uh, to smaller cap tokens that have um, total circulating supplies in the tens of billions or 1 billion or, or, or below, uh, we're, we're dealing with much smaller floats we're dealing with a lot of high leverage derivatives trading, especially in overseas markets. All those types of things can kind of act like a like a seesaw or whiplash, uh, which accentuates market movements either um, to the downside or, or to the upside. So, so all of those things together, plus sort of the the sort of Damocles high high, excuse me, the sort of Damocles hanging over all of us in the form of regulation, which um, can have outsized impacts on uh, basically the viability of certain tokens. The um, ability for exchanges to list them that whole stew of different things together makes crypto you know, just by its very different by its very definition more volatile steven you sound decently optimistic so as long as people you know aren't being suckers as you so bluntly said is this a good time yes or no for investors in the crypto market 2023 as a whole i know we're only two months in yeah, I, I mean, I do think it's a good time because the market is is recovering. Um, it has regained everything that was lost uh, from the FTX collapse back in November, and it, it's proven itself to be pretty resilient around the twenty three thousand, twenty four thousand dollar range. Um, despite the fact that there was some some near term exhaustion, and there are fears of a pullback to twenty thousand dollars or 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 below, especially if the Fed raises rates again by fifty basis points in in March, and 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 so on and so forth. I mean, we're not out of this. Um, I'm not going to call it a recession because it hasn't officially been called a recession yet, but but definitely a tenuous economic climate. Uh, at, at the same time this is a good entry point for people to get into crypto because i i do see it as um oversold still to some extent especially some of the, the bigger assets that the bitcoin ethereum and uh, i always um preach and i know we've spoken about this before too the ticket dollar cost averaging approach to to investing so if you bought some throughout 2021 uh likely you're in the red now um, if you kept buying in 2022, lower entry point. If you're buying now, still a bit of a lower entry point. So the average of all of it should hopefully be a decent midpoint that in, in five to seven years is something that you're a lot more comfortable with. So uh, th this is, I see this as a good opportunity um, to to make allocations towards crypto. Again, um, in consultation with financial advisors, none of this is, is financial advice and, and within your own personal risk parameters. But but the price point for for certain tokens, uh, aside from the ones that I mentioned before, that are just pumping for for different reasons that really have absolutely nothing to do with market fundamentals, 
um, for the for the major tokens, this is a good time to get in. Stephen, I already look forward to your next newsletter. Thank you so much for joining me. Great. Thanks, Brittany.